In this video, I'm going to show you how you can set up sequential refreshes for your data flows and semantic models using Fabric data pipelines. I'm going to show you how to set this up, but also provide you an alternative for those of you that don't have a Fabric capacity. All of that and more. So without further ado, let's jump in. So refreshing semantic models in Power BI is actually pretty easy. All you need to do is hit the refresh button to manually refresh it or schedule a refresh, which lets you schedule a refresh on a regular basis to ensure that your data is up to date. These data tables are basically cleaned up versions of your data. So columns are renamed, blanks are removed, calculated columns are added, and the general best practice is to actually reuse them wherever possible so that you don't duplicate the work that's already been done. A typical setup that you might have is you have your data flow, which ingests your data from your source, and then your semantic models will pull the data that it needs from the data flow. This generally makes it easy to maintain your reports and data because when the source data changes, all you need to do is to update that one data flow. So in this setup, when you need to refresh your data, you need to first refresh the data flow, which needs to refresh first and then complete. And then your semantic model can start its refresh and then complete so that your report gets its latest data. This needs to be done in sequence. So Basically, if you refresh both the data flow and the semantic model at the same time, the semantic model will refresh. However, it will still be pulling the old data from the data flow since the data flow refresh is still not complete. And as far as I know, Power BI doesn't really have a native way of sequentially triggering refreshes based on kind of completions from one to another until this updates with the introduction of the semantic model refresh templates. This feature lets you trigger actions based on refresh completions or failures. Note on the term action there, because it's not just refreshes that it can trigger. It can also trigger other actions that are pretty handy, like things like sending notifications or emails when a job has failed or triggering other jobs. To start with, let's head over to one of my Fabric workspaces here, which has a few things here. But what we want here is the data flow and the semantic model, which we want to refresh in sequence. Let's select any of the semantic models here. So this one is what we want to refresh the my model. And then on the top ribbon here under refresh, select create advanced refresh. You do need a workspace with a fabric capacity. Otherwise, this won't work and you will get this uh, notification. Once it's finished creating the data pipeline for you, we'll show you options from the semantic model refresh templates. There are a few options that you can choose from here. We have the event driven or triggered refresh. This is just basically starting from scratch. Refresh semantic model after a data flow runs, which is the scenario that we're looking at at the moment. Schedule refreshes, which is just setting up a schedule refresh on a regular basis for your semantic models. And then a sequential refreshes between semantic models. Let's choose the one that we need here and click select. Once you've created this, you'll see that the template created the nodes and the kind of relationship that we need to make this uh, refresh work. We have the data flow node connecting to the semantic model refresh. So let's start setting up our data pipeline here. So with the data flow node selected, let's go down to the properties here at the bottom. Let's go to settings. Let's choose the workspace that we want to pull it from. So in this case, it's just the fabric workspace. And then from our data flow, we select the data flow that we want to link with this node. So it's the London boroughs. Now the semantic model. So selecting the semantic model, again, we're going to settings. Under connection, we'll select one of these. And if this is blank, I found that you have to create your own first, which doesn't create for you automatically. You have to go to browse all and create, which is not very intuitive. Like I would have expected like a create new button there, but this is where you would create it. So you select here and then just create your new connection credentials for the Power BI semantic model. I'll close that because I have already got one here. And then from here, we just select which workspace we want to pull from and then which semantic model we want to refresh with this node. So we'll just choose my model here. And that's it really. So there's not much to it with regards to the setup. However, I just want to point out a few important things that I think will be useful to understand and to know that it exists. So each node represents an action. And you'll notice that the arrow that is connecting these two 
nodes are green. So this checkbox means on success, do this one next. So that's what it does. So when I hover over this data flow one, you'll notice that it has other kind of actions that you can uh, use to trigger certain events based on what the result is of that uh, node. So on failure, for example, maybe you want to do something else, you can drag it to another action and then on completion. So whenever this node completes or when the node is skipped and you'll notice that also in this node. We'll come back to that in a second, but for now, this setup that we need is, is pretty much done. So all we need to do now is validate or and run. We can just run since we don't really have anything too complicated here. So we'll just let it run. So you'll notice that it, it's starting to run on the top right hand side and you should be able to see the status of your run here at the bottom. So you will see this kind of page will refresh every few seconds just to show you the run and how it's, how it's, uh, how it's progressing. You'll see this blue kind of loading icon, which will kind of show where the run is at currently, like which node it's at. So at the moment it's refreshing the data flow. And now that check mark says that it's now refreshed. So now it's moving on to the next one, semantic model, and it's now loading. Great. So it looks like both of them ran successfully. And uh, that's pretty much it when it comes to setting this up. It's actually fairly simple, but at the same time, it's quite powerful in terms of its flexibility because it's not just tied to refreshes. And as I mentioned before, you can also change the actions or what nodes to run based on certain activities. And the actions themselves can give you a host of, kind of different ways that you can use these uh, data pipelines. So one of the kind of most common scenarios in, in which you would maybe want to add something else here apart from the refreshes is the notifications like I mentioned before. So let's say you want to be notified when uh, either the data flow or the semantic model fails to refresh. Now, in this case, you need to either send an email or send a Teams notification. Either would work, and I know that both of these uh, exist here in the data pipelines. So what we're going to do is go to the activities on the ribbon here and we'll select Teams. Now I chose Teams because the Outlook version, I did try it and it had some bugs. It wouldn't really work. I couldn't really get it to work. So Teams is the only one that actually I managed to get to work. And it's probably a good time to mention that this feature is actually in preview. So you might find some bugs like this which most likely will be ironed out in GA version. So for now, uh, what we'll do is we'll select the node, the Teams node, then under settings, we'll just sign in to, to my account. Okay, now that I've signed into my account, you just need to choose how you want to share it and where you want to post this in. So in my channel, in my own team, and then you put the message here, just you can put things like error in refresh. And as I selected that, you see that you can add some dynamic elements here. So um, this is a good opportunity to add things like uh, details that came with the error or maybe other information that you want to add here that is dynamic to this, uh, this pipeline. But for now, we're just going to leave it like this. And uh, that's it. So now we put the node somewhere here and uh, we want to trigger this to happen on failure for let's start with a semantic model just drag it in and we also want to do it with the data flow so that we also get notified when the data flow fails so that way now whenever any of these refresh fails we get notified in teams which is i think is a, is a great utility um, to know when something fails in this setup now if you don't have fabric an alternative that you can use is power automate but it does have its own limitations. So let me explain. So Power Automate has a trigger here that you can use called uh, when a data flow refresh completes. And in fact, it's something that I covered in a video a long, long time ago. And what it basically does is it lets you do certain actions when a data flow refresh is completed. So in this case, uh, I've logged into my same account here to refresh the same London borrows data flow. And after this refresh is complete, I can trigger another refresh here, which 
I have set up to refresh my uh, my model in the same workspace. And this basically almost gives you the same results as the one that we've just set up in the Fabric data pipelines. There are actually a few issues with this setup. The first is that this trigger is tied to the data flow completion, not success or failure. So what this means is that no matter what the result is of that data flow refresh, it will still trigger the subsequent actions after it, which, which is not actually what we want because we actually want the semantic model to only refresh when the data flow refresh is successful. In the Fabric Pipelines version, we can tie the semantic model refresh when the data flow refresh is successful, which is actually what we want in this case. The second thing is that this trigger is only available for data flow refresh completions, not semantic model refresh completions. So if you say have a version where you want the semantic model to refresh after semantic model refresh, you actually can't do that here in Power Automate only in the Fabric Pipelines version. So as you can see, this version of the kind of sequential refresh is fairly limited. However, if you're still interested in kind of implementing it and trying it out for yourself, and it doesn't require a Fabric Capacity license, go check out my video, which I uploaded, gosh, like four years ago now. It's actually quite bizarre to even say that, that Power BI has not really given us any options for sequential refreshing for such a long time now. And actually for the longest time, I've always had to do kind of staggered refreshes where I would have a scheduled refresh 30 minutes to an hour between each other to make sure that those refreshes and getting the latest data is always kind of in sequence.